since my last video, I have been working on ornaments still, but Josh was kind enough to cut me a whole whack of them. So I've been busy doing some different designs, a couple little dangly ones, super fun. But yes, I was sitting at the kitchen table yesterday from 8.30 in the morning all the way to 11.30 at night. And I was like, man, when you work for yourself at home, it's hard to kind of shut off and stop working. So today I was like, yeah, not doing art, taking a day off. So you know what I'm gonna do? A big painting. So what I would like to show you today is how to put this oh, oops, onto that. The how to scale a photograph. Okay, so step one, copy. Step two, have your canvas, which is uh, minus 30 by 40 inches, and I have my photograph I would like to scale printed off. What I like to do is pretend that this is my canvas. The way the image is, it's way too close to the edge of the canvas. I would like there to be more room on the canvas, so I am going to measure as if this page is 13 inches wide so that I have space on either side of my image. So I've gone ahead and marked the spaces at an inch interval, top and bottom. And as for the spacing in the center of the canvas, I like where it's at. So I'm just gonna start my ruler right from the start of the paper and do the same thing, grid it per inch. Works out to 13 squares across and nine squares up. So we've got our lovely canvas drawing here. So, which is 40 inches by 30 is the canvas. And we had 13 squares to grid out the image we wanted to put on there. So 40 divided by 13 is 3.07. And 30 divided by nine is 3.33. So basically three inch squares is what we're gonna need to grid to equate this, if that makes sense. I'm sure it's not like precise, but it's an ish, which I'm okay with. The next step is basically what I did here, marking out my inch squares, but on the canvas. And again, it's three inches now to scale up from this to that. I marked my squares at three inches. And of course there's 13, and a bit because it's 3.33, you know, that kind of thing. So it's not exact, but it'll work just fine. Now, you know, because I'm in no Canada and I don't have any long yardsticks to grid out my canvas, I've got myself a hockey stick. I don't know what accent this is, but apparently that's Canadian, eh? Because everybody's got a hockey stick. Apparently I know nothing about uh, Canadian accents. Just gonna play the hockey stick like so. Draw myself some lines and that'll be done in no time. I think I got to take a break from the accents, yeah? We oui? Let's go! Well, accidents do happen, but that to me does not look like a straight line. In fact, I skipped a mark, of course. that right there is why I drag my feet starting big paintings. I'm like, oh man, I gotta grid it and do the math and find a hockey stick. And it's just like, oh my God. Now for the fun part. It's basically transcribing the squares to here. So this is the second square because pretend there's a first, you know, because the page wasn't big enough. So two squares in, four squares up. That's the tip of the nose. Two squares in four squares up, that is where I'm gonna draw that. Okay, so we've determined that this square is this square. Um, so I'm gonna have a little difficulty trying to explain how I do this, but basically I'm seeing the tip of the nose starting right here, which isn't quite halfway at the square. So this is the halfway point, it's not quite at the halfway point, so about here. And then this point doesn't quite stop at halfway, so about here. So 
So that's me copying square one. And I guess I've got this to do too, which is about there. Now for the rest of it. I've got my Hercules aircraft sketched out now. So this is a no use to me anymore. And also, all these grids surrounding the object itself are just a waste of space. So I can go ahead and erase all these now so that they don't show up in my background. If I was doing a background that had details and things in it that I needed to mimic, that would be one thing. But this is the image I have to work with. And I don't think I'm going to keep that background. It's a little bit blah. I thought I would do something along the lines of a sunset in the clouds. So we'll see. All right, Fink. Mama's got to start painting. Okay? <laughs> first things first, I decided to go with this sort of color theme for the background. So I should just start to mix some colors up and wing it. <laughs> Get it? Time to gracefully mix paint. So I thought I was gonna mix up a bunch of colors, but you know what, I'm just gonna mix on the canvas itself and just kind of blend as I go. I think that will get the best result. I've started going in with the cloud details, but the painting is still a little too wet, so the brush is actually lifting the paint off, which I don't want, so I gotta let this sit for a little bit before I rework it. While I wait for the bottom half to dry, I am gonna add in the sunset. So while I painted the sunset, the clouds have now dried, so I can begin to work on that. So the background is finished and I am quite happy with it. So hopefully I don't ruin it accidentally doing this aircraft. Let's do this.
All right, so I've taken this photograph along with this as my background inspiration to create.